Hello everyone. So now we are going to discuss about the INR number 15, which is the paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. So what is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia? It will be characterized by bouts of supraventricular tachycardia, which means heart rate will be from the 150 to 250 beats per minute, right? Why it will happen? It is because most commonly because of, remember, this is most commonly because of re entrant tract. Where will be it is uh, where will be formed? So this is formed between the atrium and the ventricle, and most commonly in the AV node, right? So remember, this is the AV node which is responsible for the PSVT, right? And what will be the characteristic feature of this patient? They will be having sudden onset palpitation. Suddenly, palpitation will start. They will have lightheadedness. They will be having excessive sweating, without without precipitant means they may have a history of the stress or excessive caffeine or maybe alcohol ingestion right so sudden palpitation lightheadedness diaphoresis with stress caffeine or alcohol you can suspect paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia where you will find heart rate is 150 to 250 and this problem is because of AV node there is a re entrant tract which has been established between atrium or ventricle so if you know this then what can be the ECG finding so in ECG finding you will find regular RR interval remember whenever you will see the RR interval you will find it will be regular so everywhere you can see they are looking same and QRS will be narrow so you can see that QRS is narrow which will be less than 0.12 second right which will be less than 0.12 second on ECG if you see the ECG graph then you can see they are less than three small squares right so it will be less than three small squares that is why it is less than 0.12 seconds and in this what you are seeing that this QRS is narrow and after QRS there is a T wave right so qrs is followed by a t wave there is no p wave right so you cannot see any p wave here so that these are the important ecg finding of psvt regular rr interval narrow qrs and qrs is followed by t wave and p wave is absent right so that is why there is a close differential between the psvt versus atrial fibrillation right because both will be having no p waves remember atrial fibrillation psvt both will be having no p waves so how we are going to discriminate in psvt you will be having regular rr interval you will be having regular rr interval so you can see in this psvt if you look at the rr interval they are regular or same right whereas in atrial fibrillation you will find irregular rr interval so irregular rr interval is present in atrial fibrillation so if you don't find p wave it can be psvt or atrial fibrillation so what you will look for to rule out you will look for the rr interval if rr interval is irregular think about atrial fibrillation if it is a regular rr interval think about supraventricular tachycardia what will be the treatment of psvt so see basic goal of the treatment is to terminate the re-entry rhythm right how you can terminate the re-entry rhythm because you know that it is because of the av conduction so you have to slow down the av conduction right so av node conduction will be slowing down and this is how we are going to terminate the re-entry rhythm under two situations you can see whether patient is hemodynamically stable or unstable if patient is hemodynamically stable then you will go for vagal, vagal maneuvers like a carotid sinus massage or valsvalva valve maneuver and you can also use the iv adenosine or av nodal blockers right so av nodal blocker you can see beta blockers also you can use the non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers also like we have right and class 1a or 1c anti arrhythmics can be also used for the treatment so you can see this is the vagal maneuver carotid massage you can see here this is a vagal maneuver to terminate the av conduction all right just slowing the av conduction right and we can give iv adenosine also right but if patient is not stable hemodynamically unstable patient then you will go for the electric cardio version and if it even after this it is having recurrent tachycardia then you should go for definitive treatment and which will be a catheter ablation of the re-entry tract so these are the three things you have to remember for the treatment of PSVT. This is the Harrison 21st edition algorithm for the PSVT treatment. So whenever you find regular narrow complex tachycardia, you will think about PSVT. Remember regular, so PSVT is the diagnosis. And you will check for the hemodynamic instability. So if there is a no hemodynamic instability means he is a stable. 
hemodynamically stable person so what you will do first vagal reflex adenosine even after that recurrent tachycardia then you have to go for catheter ablation right this is one thing if vagal reflex or adenosine is not effective then you will try for non hydropyridine calcium channel blockers or beta blockers and even after that you are seeing the recurrent tachycardia go for catheter ablation right even if this is not effective you can try the anti arrhythmic that class 1a class 1c and even after that recurrent or uh, un incessant uh, tachycardia is there go for catheter ablation right but if you find that hemodynamically instability is present means he is unstable then you should go for cardio version go for cardio version and even after there is a recurrent tachycardia then final the definitive treatment will be the catheter ablation of the reentry tract so these are important point about the treatment of the psvt so keep learning best wishes for your exam